Hey, this is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about how we software developers should get rid of the tools we don't need. So as a small business person, I spend a lot of time looking at our finances, I'm looking at our income and our expenses. And every month, obviously, the amount of income should be more than the expenses. But that's not always the case. Every so often, you'll find that you're, you're spending more money than you're making. And that's not a good situation to be in, and you can't carry on very long that way. So the obvious solution is to bring in more income, just go out and bring in, you know, bring in more clients, produce another app, you know, uh, what, what could we be, what could we be doing to earn more money? But that's not always the case. I mean, we're only human. So sometimes you have to cut expenses. Like, are we spending, is everything we're spending money on essential? Is there anything that we can cut? Right. And sometimes that might be as, as cruel as it might sound. It might be a team member. It might be somebody that we, have we hired more people than we need to overseas? Have we, you know, do we need this person? Are they producing as much as, you know, are they, are they actually helping us get these projects done? Or a lot of times it's just tools like, you know, you know, are we spending money on these tools? Do we actually need them? So a lot of the times every month or every couple of months I'll go through and look at what we're spending money on. I think, you know, is this something that we actually need? Is this something that, you know, is this something we were hoping we'd use more and just haven't been? Or is it something that we could just get rid of altogether? So there's some tools that are definitely essential, like Slack. Like Slack, something we use every day. Bitbucket, something we use every day for Git hosting. You know, do we um, Lucid Chart? Something I use a lot, so we pay for that. And there's other things like LinkedIn Sales Navigator, which yeah, I might use sometimes, but not enough to to justify the cost every month. So some months I'll cancel it, some months I'll, I'll start it up again. Uh, and then you have the ones that are annual, like the Adobe Creative Suite. So last week I found that it was our renewal date for the Creative Suite. Now I have the team suite, the business team suite. So I've been spending about 160 pounds a month for the tools. And the team has grown and shrunk since then. And it's annual. So when you renew, you got to think about this. You know, how many licenses do we need? Do we need to carry this over? Who's actually using what? And this year I decided to actually cancel. I've had it for the last three or four years. And this year, when it came time to renew it, I just canceled it. And you know what? I felt so much better about it. And not because of the amount of money that I was saving, right? Not because I'm saving the money each month, just because I don't have to learn all those things again, right? I, all the things I thought, the reason to me, having an Adobe suite was like, having a membership to the Adobe suite was like having a gym membership that you don't use. It's like, I kept it on because I thought one of these days I'm going to learn it, learn it. One of these days I'm going to get really good at Photoshop. One of these days I'm going to start editing with Premiere Pro and get good at that and move from Final Cut to Premiere Pro, right? And um, once I decided to cancel it and told them I'll cancel it. By the way, they were kind of it's kind of a jerk about it too. He canceled everything immediately, even though I had a few weeks left on the on the membership on the subscription. They canceled it immediately and lost you know, but you know they don't make it easy. But anyway, once I stopped doing that, I realized, you know what? I'm not going to get good at Photoshop. It's never, there's never going to be a time where I'm going to sit down and become an expert at this. You can only learn so much. And it reminded me a lot of, of what we do with app development. There's always a shiny new tool. There's always something else you want to learn. And I'm as guilty as this as anybody else. The amount of times I've started learning Unity and moving away from Corona because I thought, I'm going to get really good at this and I watch a bunch of tutorials and all of a sudden my productivity goes down because I've had this this um, this decision to make. You know, what am I going to do this in? Should I be learning this? And I, and I have this open loop in my head like I'm not producing because I'm thinking I just need to watch another tutorial on this new software because this old software is not good enough. Right. The new shiny object I need to move to. And this is exactly what it was like with the Adobe suite. You see, I edit these videos on Final Cut Pro. I've gotten really good at it. I, you know, I know all the shortcut keys and everything. But every so often, I look at Premiere Pro, the Adobe uh, suite, and I think I'm paying for this. I should really learn how to use it. I could do much more cooler graphics with it. But yeah, I just need to learn it. And I, I've watched, spent, wasted so many hours watching tutorials. 
And it was nice to finally just – I mean I was kind of forced into making a decision just financially thinking, you know what? I'm never going to be a badass at, at the uh, at Premiere Pro or Photoshop or anything like that. It's time to cut that out and just to focus on the stuff that I'm good at, the stuff that I can do because as I said, this year is about producing. And it's the same with software technologies. There's always a new framework coming out. Should we be using Vue.js or, or React or, or Angular or should we be doing whatever? And sometimes it's just sticking with what you know and just, and just doing. And you know, it would be much easier if we had less choices. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you because it, was just, it felt so good to not be to, – to put that out of, out of the way. And I think one of the things when we go into 2020 is not so much what do we want to be able to do is what are we going to stop doing? What are we going to say, okay, I'm going to focus on this, this one thing that I'm good at or this one thing that I want to get at, be good at, and I'm going to close the door to everything else. I'm going to shut everything off, else off. And, um, you know, let, I mean, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Uh, let me know if you, you agree with me. I think a lot of times as software developers, me, I, I know this because I definitely do this. You look at the shiny object syndrome. You look, you look at the shiny object. You look at, oh, this new framework that's coming out. Should I be doing that? Should I be going with, you know, should I move from Java to, um, to Kotlin? Should I do, you know, uh, is this one better than that? And sometimes you you spend so much time uh, switching, going from one thing to the next, that you never become really, really good at one thing. Anyway, just my thoughts. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, that's it for today. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Mm -hmm.